Hey guys, welcome back to a new video, and as you guys have probably guessed, today we are actually back on Pottermore, which is the Harry Potter website, there's a whole bunch of quizzes and stuff you can do on there, to find out what kind of witch or wizard you guys would be. And last time we did the Hogwarts sorting quiz, I secretly wanted to be a uh, Slytherin, but I actually got Gryffindor. Not sure what that says about me as a person. Hence why I'm wearing my Gryffindor jumper again, ready for another day in the life of a Hogwarts student. So there's a few other quizzes on there that last time I posted this you guys were like please do the Patronus quiz please do the wand quiz and just figure out what kind of wand you you to get as well so that is exactly what we're going to be doing today if you guys haven't done these quizzes yet I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can give it a go as well set up your own Pottermore profile and let me know what you get in the comments below I'm really interested to see how our answers compare also I'm really interested to know what my Patronus would be because I kind of like all the animals so I'm not really sure which kind of what it will be so if you guys have any other quizzes or that kind of thing that you'd like me to do I I love doing quizzes. I like, I don't know, it's a kind of a little bit of a vain thing, isn't it? But wanting to find out what you are, what kind of results should be, I really enjoy doing them. So if you guys have any other ideas for quizzes, please drop them in the comments below. I'll have a look through and maybe we can do some more quizzes together. And if you guys are also big Harry Potter fans, if there's anything else on Pottermore you want me to do, or when the Harry Potter mobile game finally launches, if you guys want me to get involved in that, please let me know in the comments below as well. So I think since we're doing a Patronus quiz that's based around animals, we should probably have, you know, a spirit animal here to help us. So, here is my little spirit animal. It is, of course, little Evie Beebe, my baby. And though you can't take dogs to Hogwarts with you, if I had to take any pet, I would take my Bean every time because she's my little soulmate doggy. She is literally my little perfect, perfect baby. I mean, look at her. How can she not be anybody's perfect angel? And she's not been in a video for a while, so mwah, little Beanie Bobby is going to be here to help us out. Don't know how comfy you can get on my knee. This chair's kind of small. But if you could stay with us for this, I'd really appreciate it, okay? What do you think? She's like, what? What do you want from my child? There you go. I don't think you guys can see her very well. But hopefully she's going to stay and help us out. So here is where we left Pottermore last time, where Hogwarts house was Gryffindor. It was quite a long quiz. And I'm not sure, I would, it would have been quite nice to see what percentage of each house you were. Like, how Gryffindor I was versus, ooh, yawny head. How Gryffindor I was versus the other houses. But Gryffindor students tend to be bold, courageous. They don't necessarily think things through. They're very much like, they, they just act. But, you know, it's meant to be a good house to be. Harry Potter was, of course, in-house Gryffindor. And today, we are going to be discovering our Patronus. I actually would quite like to get a dog. Because, you know, dogs are special and cool, aren't they? I have my own little doggeroo here so let's go ahead and discover our patronus eve is like yeah you can discover it on your own friend oh i don't want one fine i'll do it on my own lapine okay she's wagging a tail so let's discover what our patronus would be Ooh, better with headphones yes this one has sound you guys yay oh wow it's so mystical and gorgeous okay i can hear that the last one didn't have any sound so i'm excited about this so the Patronus is kind of a positive force, a projection of the very things- No, 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 tree <laughs> trees! How could you do this to me? Discover your Patronus. Okay, so if you guys haven't seen the films, a Patronus is basically almost like a protection animal that comes out of your end of your wand as a spell and protects you from certain bad things. In the movies, it was mainly the Dementors who were kind of the, um, they're a sort of like an evil ghosty kind of force that protected Azkaban, which was one of the prisons in it. And each person's Patronus tends to be, if they're powerful enough to cast one that looks like a, uh, an animal, it will represent something important about them. So that's Harry's Patronus. His was actually a stag, which was reference to his father, who could uh, change himself into a stag prongs so there you go that's where that kind of comes from so our patronus it is more than just casting a cool animal your patronus is meant to say a little bit about your soul and who you are as a person it's meant to have some kind of interest in relevance and you can only discover your patronus once the questions are timed so go with your instincts so there's no second chances on this if i get like a, a rat or like a porcupine a porcupine would probably be okay but if i get like i don't know a slug one, it's going to be a bit of a rubbish Patronus, but two, there's no second chances. So, let's go ahead and see what we get. And it's time, so I'm going to have to be kind of speedy, okay? Here we go, you guys. Relax and think of your happiest memory. Probably chilling out in bed, I would say, with... Ooh, look at this. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. With uh, Ali and Evie and the cats watching some TV. Sun, window rain, sun every single time. I'm always cold, so definitely sun. 
This is pretty. I like this. I don't quite understand the relevance to the Patronus, but I like it. I guess Harry discovered his. Make or improve? Um, make, I would say. Like to create things for myself rather than improve on somebody else's. Yeah, I think I already discovered his across the lake in the Forbidden Forest, so maybe that's why we're kind of at the, that. Yeah, that makes total sense. Lead, save, or I think that says escape. Uh, I quite like to lead, I would say. Lead or save, so I will go for lead. A little bit of a leader, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, 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 oh. Is it already? Is that all the questions? Oh, something is trying to merge from your wand. Keep going. Oh gosh, guys, we might have seen a glimmer of it there. This is good. We are strong enough to cast an animal Patronus. Free or safe? Free. Every time. Because you could be safe. Oh, your Patronus is almost here. But not actually free. It's freedom is the most important thing, you know? Okay. Is there going to be more questions? Mind, heart, or spirit? Oh, that's really hard. I'm going to go for heart. Between heart and spirit. But I tend to follow my heart. I d oh, okay, we're across the lake. Does that mean we're getting ready to cast it? I'm getting ready for wand, you guys. Look at me go. Shh. Click and drag. Okay, here we go. For sure. Oh. A chow dog. <laughs> Why is there a chow dog? I mean, we got a dog. So I'm quite happy about that. I would say a chow is kind of an unusual. Imagine firing that out and it's just like licking the Dementors to death. Kind of a little bit of a weird one. But I said I'd be happy with a dog because I love dogs. I'm going to pretend it's actually an Eevee. Although, I don't know how scary an Eevee is going to be either. But still, at least we got a little doggeroo for ourselves. I thought at first I'm like... It's a lion! I got lion! But no, a chow dog. Chow chows, I believe, have blue black tongues rather than pink tongues. So, you know, there you go. So, our Patronus is a chow dog. A little bit more about my Patronus. Does it say anything specifically about my Patronus? No. <laughs> the Patronus is the most famous and famously difficult defense charm. It's a guardian or protector who takes the form of an animal. I don't know what a chow dog says about mine. Like, my tongue's not black, you know? I don't know. I don't know, you guys. You are gonna have to tell me myself a little bit, yourselves, a little bit about what chow dog means. Is that a good one or is that a bad one? I, I don't know. I was thought, if I was thinking a dog type Patronus, I would have said a wolf. I don't think a chow dog is very scary. But I guess I'm not very scary either, so, you know. Okay, now on to the wand ceremony. Is this a headphones experience or not? I honestly don't think it is, so I'm going to take these off again. Okay, so this one isn't timed. Take your time and answer honestly. Your answers are final. So, let's begin the experience. And to, all, to ensure we find the perfect wand for you, Miss Calera, it is important that you answer the following questions honestly. First of all, would you describe yourself as average height? Short or tall? I'm five foot eight, which I think the average for a girl is like five foot five, five foot six. So I'd say I'm not super tall, like I'm not like a five foot eleven lady. However, I would say I, I, I lean a little bit more towards tall, so I'm gonna go ahead and select tall. You know, just in case it's relevant for my wand experience. So, and your eyes, look at all these little spooky eyes staring at me. Okay, dark brown or black? Brown, hazel, blue, Blue, grey, blue, green, green, grey, or what's the final one? An, uh, an other colour. Red eyes like a lily bear. Um, so my eyes, I would say they're somewhere between this blue and green. It's it's hard to tell on this camera, but my eyes are kind of, they're sim similar-ish to this sort of a colour here. But the inner ring is, is quite green. So on pictures, they sometimes can look a bit boring and colourless, but they are like... I don't know if you can tell. They are quite greenish kind of eyes, but I wouldn't say they're that fully green. Apparently only 1-2% of the population has fully green eyes. I would say I'm around this blue-green kind of colour here, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Was the day on which you were born an even number or an odd number? So I was born on the 6th of August. Um, I love this artwork, by the way. I was born on the 6th of August, uh, so I'm definitely an even number. And do you pride yourself most on your kindness, your optimism, your determination, your resilience, your imagination, your intelligence, or your originality. 
I would say for me, it's definitely imagination. I remember when I was younger, I used to, when I used to draw my own books and make my own stories and stuff, my dad was always like, oh, you're very creative. And that like really stayed in my mind, that word creative, so I really focused on it and wanted to be like a creative, imaginative person. So I, I, I think I kind of am. Maybe? So I would say if there's anything to have pride on, it's kind of what my dad said about my imagination. So, we we'll select that. Traveling alone on a deserted road, you reach a crossroads. Oh, more pretty artwork, you guys. Do you go left towards the sea, ahead to the forest, or right to the castle? Okay, so it's a castle this way. <gasps> See, I love, like, foresty kind of things. But I am traveling alone on a scary road, and it looks a little bit spooky at night. Hey, I'm a wizard, so I can just cast my little chow dog. I'm a witch, actually. I can cast my little chow dog and he will keep me company, or she. And she will also light the, the ray ahead. So I'm gonna say ahead into the forest, you guys. So do you most fear fire? I, I don't wanna get burnt alive, but I also like the warmth. Darkness. I am actually afraid of the dark. And if Ali isn't at home and is sleeping in the same bed as me, if he's away, then I leave the light on. I have a lamp on in my room. It's because I'm, you know, just a 20 odd year old that's still afraid in the dark. And I had a light on for the whole of my childhood in my room. Isolation. Okay, I don't like that idea. That's kind of scary as well. Small spaces don't bother me too much. However, I hate my legs being like, um, trapped. Like the idea of not being able to move my legs, I get quite panicky when I can't do that. So I don't like spaces where your legs are sort of trapped. Some plain seats and stuff like that I don't really like. Or heights, that would be Ali. So I think for me, it's definitely a fear, most of all, of the darkness. Ironically, because that's a very, very bright orange, but I would say I'm most afraid of the dark. In a chest of magical artifacts, would you choose? <gasps> How pretty is this, by the way, with all these beautiful crystals everywhere? An ornate mirror, a dusty bottle, poison a golden key we don't know where's the key to a silver dagger okay that would be quite badass a bound scroll could have a cool spell in it a glittering jewel probably is worth a lot of money or a black glove i'd say for me it's definitely between the scroll and the dagger however the dagger reminds me of the subtle knife if you've never read philip pullman's his dark materials oh my gosh read that book series they're my favorite series i always cry my eyes out reading they're amazing i don't want to ruin it but there's a knife in that that allows you to open up um kind of a, a way into getting between other worlds and so i kind of want to go for this silver dagger like this subtle knife <gasps> older worked with dragon heartstring core 13 inches and surprisingly swishy flexibility your wand has chosen you spread the word I don't really know what Alderwood is. A dragon heartstring is kind of like, it's cool and badass because it's a dragon, but also I kind of feel sad for the dragon whose heartstring I took, you know? 13 inches, so that's like the size of a MacBook Pro. That's how I know that size. That's like, what about like this big? That's quite good one size. And surprisingly swishy flexibility. It would be cool if you could go to like Harry Potter world or any of the Harry Potter like stores or experiences and get the wand that matches that. Cause I, I want this wand now, like it's not too flashy. It's kind of very like a, it does the job kind of wand. And I like that. Let's see if I can find out a little bit more about my wand. Ooh, oh, it says more here. It's an unyielding wood. Yeah, I have discovered that its ideal owner is not stubborn or obstinate, but helpful, considerate, and most likable. Most wand woods seek similarity in the characters of those they best serve. Alder is unusual in that it seems to desire a nature that is, if not precisely the opposite, then markedly different. When an older one is happily placed, it becomes magnificent, a magnificent loyal helpmate. Helpmate. Of all the one types, Alder is best suited to non-verbal spell work. Whence comes its reputation for being suitable for only the most advanced witches and wizards? <gasps> That's so cool! That means I'm a badass witch, you guys! I don't have to say anything, I can just be like... And then stuff gets done. I like that, I like that a lot. Dragon, as a rule, dragon heartstrings produce ones with the most power, which are capable of the most flamboyant spells, which I can do without saying. Dragon ones tend to learn more quickly than other types. While they change alliance, if one from their original master, they always bond strongly with the current owner. But nobody else allowed my one because it will like them as much as it likes me. The dragon ones tends to be the easiest to turn to the dark arts, although it will not incline this way on its own. You know, I did want to be in Slytherin. However, I ended up in Griffin. 
Gryffindors. That's a good sign. It is also the most prone of the three cards to accidents being somewhat temperamental. So you have to be, I didn't realize there was this much history in like individual characteristics of the ones. That's really cool. So I have to be quite careful with it. It's probably going to be difficult initially, but then when I master it, it's going to be really cool. 13 inches in length. The following notes on one length are taken from notes on the subject by Mr. Garrick Ollivander Wandmaker. Most ones will range between 9 and 14 inches, while I've sold extremely salt short ones, 8 inches and under, and very long ones, over 15 inches. These are exceptionally rare, however, abnormally short ones usually select those whose character is something lacking, rather than because they are physically undersized. Many small witches and wizards are chosen by longer ones. Okay, 13 inches seems a pretty good size then, I'm happy with that. And surprisingly, swishy flexibility. The notes on this are wand flexibility or rigidity denotes a degree of adaptability and willingness to change possessed by the wand, pair, wand and owner pair. Although again, this factor ought not be considered separately from the wand wood, core and length, nor the owner's life experience and style of magic, all which combines to make the wand in question unique. So because it's surprisingly flexible and swishy, it means my own character is, I don't know, flexible, willing to change, Probably good things, I would say. So I'm really, really happy with my wand. It's a little bit ugly, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but it does the job and it's really, really strong. But it sounds like I've got all the coolest stuff, to be honest with you guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this with our really cool wand and our slightly more hilarious Patronus. Let me know if you guys do this quiz, which answers you get. And if you have any more quizzes you would like me to do, please let me know in the comments below because I absolutely love, love, love doing these. And I'm pretty impressed with my two little new selections for my Pottermore website. The only thing I haven't done, done yet is the uh, Ilva Moni house. And that's because I don't actually... I, I'm not as much of a follower as the Fantastic Beast side of things. I'm much more like o OG Harry Potter, I would say. I mean, I could do it really quickly for you guys and just see what I get. Just because I kind of like the answers at the end and what they say about me, you know? Va vainly. Vainly, really. Where will the enchanted carvings place you? Oh, so it's not a sorting hat. Okay, this is kind of a new... Uh, I'm learning things here. So would you rather hunt or heal? Ah, uh, oh man, I don't know. I think I'm a healer. I'd say heal. And why? Why not? <laughs> because I want to. Stupid question. We may never know. Oh man. Um, I would say. Oh, this is tough. These are much more like abstract, aren't they? I'm gonna say why not. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Think of a question you would most like to be answered by a person or all-knowing being or device. Which of the following most closely resembles the answer you'd like to hear? So I I was gonna say what is the meaning of life, but you know, without a shadow or a doubt doesn't quite answer that. So I am gonna just think of something in my head. I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is though. So what would I most like to hear? Without a shadow of a doubt, never, very soon, it is impossible. Yes, I will show you everything. Only if you agree, if you come with me, no I didn't. Wow, there's a lot of answers here. You are, yes you may, only once, if you want to, forever, not many years. I would say my answer I would want would be that. It's something Ali related. I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is, but you may be able to guess. Little cheeky little Easter egg enough for you guys, okay? I wish I knew how to forget, win, escape, or get through. These ones are way like, give me the sorting heart any day. These are hard, man. I wish I knew how to, I, I think I'm gonna say forget. I have a bit of an issue with um, replaying stuff in my brain all the time of things that I regret in my life. And I, it, it's really bothersome and it gets me and I'm trying to go to sleep and my brain just keeps on going on and on and on. So I'm gonna say forget. I don't wanna forget altogether, but it, it'd be nice to not replay things, you know? It's like the worst cinema ever. I, I'm strongest when I know I'm right. I'm with my comrades. I'm enthusiastic. I'm awake. Or when I'm alone. I kind of want to say when I know I'm right. I think when you've got conviction, you get quite passionate and you like, that's when you argue the best because you know that you have got the right answer. I'm going to say that. I know it kind of sounds, sounds a bit like, I know, annoying-ish, but I'm going to go for it. And where would you least like to find yourself? Imprisoned alone in a silent dungeon, dungeon? That would be pretty creepy. Locked on a crowded cage, standing room over only? That would also be awful. In the dock of a court, accused of a crime you did not commit. On the deck of a ship, as a tidal wave comes over the horizon. Trapped in an attic as the house below you burns. My god, these are horrible. On the rope bridge 
fraying over a canyon or lost in the forest at night with eyes scared staring at you through the dark okay when i read that one i got shivers down my spine like Ooh, i can still feel them so i'm gonna say that one because that sounds creepy a soulmate is out there somewhere an illusion a phys a psychic twin or strong where i'm weak weak where i'm strong uh, i like I like this idea that your soulmate is somebody who balances you perfectly. You ca I think you, you have to be similar as well. But in the places where you struggle, they excel and you kind of help pick each other up. So I, that's my belief of a soulmate anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and save this one. And you can rescue a baby or the only bottle of a potion that could save a thousand lives. The baby, the bottle only might save a thousand lives or the bottle, the chance of saving a thousand lives is too important to miss. Oh my gosh, this is like, if it didn't say might, then I would I would go for the potion every time because it's saving a, hundred, a thousand versus a baby but because it, it just could it just could save them i'm gonna go for the baby because that's a guaranteed life versus a thousand hypothetically guaranteed lives so i'm gonna say the way baby you guys <gasps> you've been sorted into thunderbird okay what is the Thunderbird house? Named after Chadwick Boot after his favorite magical beast, the Thunderbird, a beast that can create storms as it flies. Thunderbird's house is sometimes considered to represent the soul of a witch or a wizard. It also said that Thunderbird favors adventurers. And also, can I just point out, Thunderbird is red, you guys, so I don't even need to change my jumper. I truly am deserving of a red house, apparently. And what is the Thunderbird wallpaper? Okay, it's just like this. Okay, you know. I don't, in my head, they're not quite as cool as the uh, Hogwarts houses, but I still think the house that I've got sounds really cool. And it's like an adventurous house. Thunderbirds sound pretty cool. And it's red, so I don't even have to change my jumper. So I'm quite happy about that. So guys, that was my updated Pottermore quizzes. We did the Patronus, we did the Wand, and we did the Ilvermoni house quizzes as well. Let me know what you think of all my answers. In the comments below, and please comment on what you get as well, because I love to hear other people's responses. And especially for stuff like the Wand and the Patronus, it's going to give me a little bit of a insight into what other answers they could have been and you know especially for the patronas what cooler answers i could have got and let me know what you think of those answers say about me as well so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video thank you so so much for watching please suggest any other quizzes you want to see and i'll see you guys in another video bye